Okay, so in this video, we're going to forecast the statement of cash flows. And this can be a fairly intimidating schedule to build. And if for some reason, it's kind of a financial modeling black hole. You know, I'll see people have stuff linked all over the place in their file. It goes to different schedules, different tabs, crazy formulas. I have no idea if it ties out to the balance sheet at all. And here's the good news. The cash flow statement is actually very easy to build. You only need to link it to two places. One is the income statement, and the other is the balance sheet. You know, that's it. So all the formulas here can stay on this one tab. And then here's the best part, the ending cash, which is what we're trying to solve for, we already have that answer up here on the balance sheet, right? Here's the cash, and these are hard-coded numbers that were given to me by the company. So I know that at the end of the day, if I get the number here that matches, then I have confidence that my cash flow statement works. And so when I drag it forward into the forecast period, I can still have that same level of confidence that it's working correctly. So let's just go ahead and build it out. Again, I've got all the instructions right here. All we are doing is linking it to the income statement and the balance sheet, and that's it. So our net income, we link it to the income statement. Come up here, click that, hit enter. Same for our depreciation, we're gonna link it to the income statement. Equals, come up here, there's my depreciation. When you get to current assets and current liabilities, all you're doing is taking the difference in time period. So for assets, it's the previous period minus the current period, and for liabilities and equity, it's the current period minus the previous period. That's it. So change in our accounts receivable, right? The previous period minus the current one, right up here, this one minus this, hit enter. Same for the inventory and the prepaid expenses, right? Equals previous minus current. And then I can just press control D to bring this formula down one because the prepaid expenses are right below it. If I flip over to accounts payable, just doing the opposite calculation, current period minus previous. So equals, come up to my AP here, current minus previous. Same thing for the accrued expenses right here, current minus previous. And just like that, I've got my cash from operations already done. Now we need to go down to my cash to investing, which is the change in the fixed assets. This is going to give us our CapEx or capital expenditures. Very similar but slightly different formula. We just have to pull out the depreciation because our fixed assets are shown on a net basis, meaning that the depreciation is already factored in here. So same formula as the assets. We're going to do equals previous period minus current period, but then minus the depreciation. So previous period minus the current period. Close that out and then subtract again the depreciation. Hit enter. Got that right there. Looks like the company spent about 200000 last year in capital expenditures. Then the last two, just the change in the debt and the contributed capital for my financing section. This is a liability, so it's the current period minus the previous period. Let's do equal. Come up here to my debt. Where's that? Current minus previous. And then change in the contributed capital, also current minus previous. Right. So let's go here. This minus this. It's going to be zero because I can tell that they're the same. And let's take a look. Our number here, 708973, that's the ending cash. If I look up at my balance sheet, I've got that same number, 708973. So now I am confident that my statement of cash flows is working. And again, all I had to do was link it to the income statement and the balance sheet. That's it. No fancy tabs, no fancy formulas, nothing like that. Now, through the power of Excel, I can quickly do the next year by just dragging this all over to the right. So if I press Control R on my keyboard, it brings every formula over to the right one cell. Now you can see I quickly have completed my cash flow statement for last year. I've got this 1153 number. Let's go up here and double check. There it is, 1153507. 1, so now I'm super confident that this is working well. Last step, let's just build it for our forecast year because these are just formulas that are going to link to other schedules that we're building. So I can press Control R and I'm all set. The reason it doesn't balance is because our balance sheet is still empty. And so at the end of the day, once we populate this, the ending cash here is going to link to the ending cash in our balance sheet. So I know that was a pretty quick walkthrough of the statement of cash flows, but the big point here is it can be simpler than you might think. You know, it doesn't have to be overcomplicated. All we have to do is link it to the income statement and the balance sheet, and we're just calculating changes over time, and that's how we calculate the cash. In the next video, we're going to keep moving on. We're going to get started with the working capital schedule down here.